Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Pentiment. We haven't gotten really far, we need to get our asses to work. First, let's talk to Klaus. And Klaus talks like this because he's the town printer, which is really cool. Morning, Andreas. How's it going? Morning, Klaus. Another day at the Abbey, another few hours to work on my masterpiece. Good to hear. Still coming on by for supper for Marie and Bert. Love to see you. That's Marie, that's Bert. We really need to see the new woodcuts I have for Italian edition of Till Eulenspiegel. Till Eulenspiegel, the titular character of a popular 15th century book. Till is a prankster, continually exposing the vices and hypocrisy of others. He is also quite skilled at tricking people into smelling, touching, or eating his excrement. Ah, how lovely. I didn't realize Father Thomas let you print books in Italian. Come on, Andreas. He's not that strict. I know he's just trying to protect people from... Heresy? Witch mania? Adventure stories of questionable moral <laughs> repute? doesn't mind those so much, actually. No? As long as they don't get too... carnal. Oh. <laughs> so, supper tonight after Vespers? Of course. Great, I'll tell Marie and Bert you're coming. See you then. See you later. Hi, Father Thomas. God bless you, Master Mahler. I hope this your week is going well. Thank you, Father. I'm running late today. Thank you, Father. It's going quite well. I'm just on my way to Hill to get to work. Good, good, Andreas. I don't recall seeing you at Sunday morning mass. Uh, yeah, about that. You understand how important it is for your salvation that you receive Holy Communion, don't you? Uh, yes, I apologize, Father. I'll make it this Sunday. Just stayed up. Just stayed up too late on Saturday. I don't want to get into an argument with him about this. We're going to search on Sunday be such a burden, for if not for his sake, consider for your own. Man has many, many duties. Father Thomas should appreciate how hard you work to help the Abbey. This asshole can make you go to mass. To hell with him! Man has many duties. Almost everyone in town will start them. I apologize. Uh, I'll make it this, Saturday, this Sunday. You don't have to make a promise to me, but your salvation is... is contingent. I, I, I love that they make mistakes sometimes, but, but it makes it hard for me to read. <laughs> it's contingent on... Oh my, what a blessed day to receive such an illustrious visitor. Master Mahler, this is Lorenz, Baron of Rothfogel. A great lord from the countryside near Worms. Worms, prosperous imperial city, free city, in the western part of the empire. Located in the Rhine River, Worms has been the site of many imperial diets. Good to see you, Father Thomas. It's nice to be remembered fondly. I only wish all of your neighbors were as welcoming. Well, yes. That brings you back to our little town. My wife and I were returning from a trip to Venice. We spent a few days in Innsbruck, capital of the Austrian country of Tyrol. Major stop to the Imperial Road connecting Italy and Bavaria. It is closest major city to Kirsau, Abbey and Tassang. Notably, it has also the site of witch trials in 1485. And was terribly dull. I mean, it has certain charm common to these alpine cities, but the palace was crawling with nobles from the Emperor's Diet. An Imperial Diet is an assembly of three colleges of the Imperial Estates of the Holy Roman Empire, the Prince Electors, the Princes and Dukes, and then representatives of the Imperial Cities. They meet to deliberate on matters of importance to the Empire. The Emperor? Was he there? Did you see him? Oh, briefly. But he was sitting for a portrait at the time, quite lovely. Didn't want to bother him or the painter. 
Hmm. How was Venice, my lord? No. Who was the artist? I'm sure you know him. An older man from Nuremberg with enough of a reputation to paint to the Emperor. I'm sorry, my lord. I'm not sure who you mean. Have you not heard of Albrecht Dürer? Pity. I thought he was known across the Empire. Dürer. Albrecht Dürer is a renowned painter and printmaker from Nuremberg. He is revered in Venice as well as across the Holy Roman Empire since 1512. He has enjoyed the patronage of Emperor Maximilian I. Anyway, my wife wanted to stay a bit longer in Innsbruck and I decided to ride ahead to make to make a visit to Kirstow. I heard Father Matthias died shortly after my last visit, of course. Abbot of Kirstow before Father Gernot, widely respected by the monks and nuns as well as the people of Tassing, known for his kindness and his love of books. A great loss for us, for the Abbey, and for us all. Indeed. By good fortune, I recently came across a copy of the Historia Tassiae. He was reading during my last visit. Account of early history of Tassing, Kirsau's previous abbot, Father Matthias, had a copy. Baron Rothfogel brought another to the Abbey as a gift. Father Matthias was hoping to find a second copy to corroborate the contents of the first. It contains some fascinating details about the history of this place. I'm afraid they might even cause a bit of a scandal. Ah, yes. Uh, I must be off. There will be time enough to discuss Tassing's past later. I commissioned a manuscript from the Abbey through, through Father Gunnar, and I have come to check on its progress. That's Father Gunnar. Oh, my lord, if you have come to see your manuscript, you should speak with young Master Mallor here. Uh, not quite a true master, yet. Andreas is a journeyman artist from Nuremberg. For the next few months he is also helping in the Abbey Scriptorium. Scriptorium is a room for writing, illustrating and illuminating manuscripts. Though typically associated with mon monasteries, they have disappeared from almost all abbeys by the 16th century. A Nuremberger artist working in an Abbey Scriptorium. In yeah, five thousand. Yeah, in five thousand eleven hundred eighteen. No, in fifteen eighteen. Oh, we should we should talk, Andreas. I must know the story. Uh, surely, my lord will find little entertainment. Let's be polite to his lordship. You have to judge the quality of your entertainment. Oh, it sounds like they're off to a bad start. Thank you for the introduction, Father Thomas. Come to support the Abbey tonight. I'm inviting you to the Abbot's table. Did the, ab did the Abbot invite me? Oh, don't worry about it, Father. Just show up after Vespers. What is he going to do? Refuse us? Yeah, just invite him to someone else's dinner table. Excellent. We will see you then. Miklaus. I'm dismounting. Run ahead for us and take the horses to the Abbey's guest house. I'd like to take my time talking with Master Mahler. I'll meet you there. At once, my lord. So then, a journeyman from Nuremberg. Forgive me for saying so, but you seem a little bit old to not yet be a master. You said you were you were unmarried? No, I'm not married, but in truth, I came to my vocation later than my father in Burbs. I was in university for a number of years at Erfurt. Erfurt is one of the most populous cities in the Empire and is located near its heart. It's been home to a respected university since 1379 and is a center of humanist thought. Erfurt, wonderful! S the same university as Martin Luther. Have you read his works? No. Martin Luther was a priest and professor of theology at the University of Wittenberg, Wittenberg, controversial for his opinions on the church's sale of indulgences to forgive sin, which were recently published and distributed throughout the empire. He 
says things about the church that should have been said years ago. Might get him into trouble, but he's brave. Brilliant man. Wait. You may have met him, did you? You must tell me. Ah, no, he was a few years ahead of me. Still, his ideas seem fascinating. Hmm. Are we going to be Protestants? Or are, or, or are we going to be remain faithful to the one true universal Catholic Church? Well, let, let's be a little bit of a... Let, let's commit some slight heresy. Just as a treat. I agree. Wholeheartedly. I assume you must meet him, if I get a chance. I wonder if the good brothers of the Abbey have heard of him. Perhaps they have even read his life, his list of 95 theses against the church. List of propositions against the church, practice of selling indulgences for the remission of sin was written in 1517 by Martin Luther. Father Matthias was not above having a lively debate. I hope Father Gernot does not disappoint in that regard. But enough about Luther for now. Tell me about your university studies. Did you attend the university? You seem very well educated. Ah, no, my family is merely wealthy enough to have provided me with all of the books and tutors a child could dream of. I love all knowledge, from Aristotle to Cicero to Ficino and Erasmus, and everyone in between and yet to come. Cicero, statesman, scholar, lawyer, and renowned orator of the late Roman Republic, he is revered both for his contributions to Latin literature and his skill at rhetoric. Ficino, Marcello Ficino was a 15th century Italian priest and humanist who was of the leading figures of the Italian Renaissance. He is known for his translations of the work of Plato into Latin. Erasmus of Rotterdam, a Dutch priest and philosopher who is prominent among northern humanists, he is known for his works in Latin and Greek as well as his calls for reform within the church. Aristotle, Greek philosopher and student of Plato, renowned as a polymath, he wrote on a wide variety of subjects. His work is extensively cited by current scholars and even more works attributed to him than he could have ever written. I may have misjudged Baron. He seems he is as well as well read as any university student. In truth, I am simply happy to speak with another well educated man. Now then, did you earn your doctorate? I uh, no, didn't. Only a master's degree. I started working toward the doctorate but didn't finish. Well that's a shame. Well, what was your area of study? Hmm. What did we study? I mean, this could be good for us on the future. I, I'm, I've seen a little bit ahead. I know what's going to happen. So, this is going to be useful. But I'm curious. I'm going to... I'm going to say I studied Imperial Law. Curious how how that's how that's gonna play out. Never had much interest in the subject, honestly, a bit dull for my tastes. Besides, the empire is such a mess of jurisdictions: Bavarian law, Rhenish law, Franconian law. Nonsense. I rarely use my money to pay someone who studied the nonsense to learn it myself. You, if I had any faith, I would have prayed you'd never show your face here again. Curse you, Lawrence Rothfogel. Pachter's dogs tearing you to pieces would be too kind of fate. These rustic communities display a shocking lack of hospitality, don't you think? Well, what was that about? Who knows? By the time I finish, I finish guessing, the old crone will probably be dead. No. What of your early time in university? Every student must study the trivium and quadrivium, yes? Trivium and quadrivium represent the lower and upper divisions of classical liberal arts university education. Latin, grammar, logic, and rhetoric form the trivium. Arithmetic, geometry, music, and astronomy form the quadrivium. Did you have a favorite subject? Oh. 
Oh, I, I, I do want to study Latin. <laughs> Strong command of Latin. There's excellent rhetoric in university. He is skilled teacher, persuader, and public speaker. Heavens and Earth. Great deal about the constellations. Let's say we're a good, uh, good orator. I studied rhetoric. I assume you studied the Greeks and Romans both. Yes, Aristotle and Cicero, of course, but also Christian thinkers like Augustine and Thomas Aquinas. Augustine. St. Augustine of Hippo was early Christian philosopher, theologian, and bishop of Hippo Regius. He is recognized as a doctor of the church and is most known for his works, The City of God, and his autobiography, Confessions, as well as his development, uh, autobiographic confessions, as well as his development of the doctrine of original sin. Thomas Aquinas was an immensely influential philosopher, theologian, and jurist of the tradition of scholasticism. True, we have less use for public discourse than settlers did in the Roman Republic. Exactly, the doctors of the church weren't trying to persuade politicians, but to move the mind towards Christian truth. Still, the principle remains the same. Intent your arguments, invent your arguments, then arrange style and internalize them before diverting them to your audience. Splendid, though I suppose an artist has little use for rhetoric, especially in a place such as this. Not true. The rhetoric is also an art, and like other forms of art, should be created for the audience and its purpose. It can be practiced as easily as in the streets of a rural town as in the Curia of Rome. What is Rome? I'd never heard of it. Though outshone by its northern neighbor, Florence, Rome is still the seat of power for the Catholic Church and an impressive center for the arts. Well put. Any other studies? Was there anything else you excelled at? I, I, I'm, I am going against what, what I think could be useful for us. It's just build a big brain, big brain guy. He, he, he's just a, a debate bro. We're just building Andreas as a debate bro. Uh, logic, geometry, and arithmetic. Quite interesting for an artist. Was Aristotle's organ on the foundation of your study? Yes, the organon for logic and Euclid's elements for geometry, but the past few centuries have yielded wonderful new texts on logic. Mathematician of ancient Alexandria, he is recognized as the father of geometry and is most well known for his books of elements, the foundation of all the university education and geometry. Peter Abelard provided the foundation of scholastic philosophy and established the primacy of Aristotle's work. 12th century French teacher, philosopher, and theologian. He is known for his philosophical work in logic and his theological work in atonement theory. He is also remembered for his love affair with his student, the renowned Benedictine nun, abbess, and scholar Eloise d'Argentuil. Ah, lo love when you have your affairs with nuns that are your students. <laughs> The Englishman William of Ockham gave us the Summa Logicae, arguing nominalism against Platonic realism. A 13th 14th century English Franciscan philosopher and theologian, known for his commentary commentaries on Peter Abelard's Four Books of Sentences, his defense of apostolic poverty, and his writings on faith and reason. And of course, Thomas Aquinas gave us the tools to employ both faith and reason in the pursuit of truth. All monks and friars, of course, a great deal of work to force Aristotle to fit within the church's vision of truth. Is that so wrong? I question that these great men should have had to wrestle logic into what the church established by fiat and force. Ah, there's the abbey. Have good memories of this place, and of Father Matthias. I was sad to hear of his passing. How did you come to know him? How did you come to know of Kirsaw at all? My family have been patrons of Kirsaw for, oh, I don't know how many generations. Some years ago, I heard that Kirsaw still had a wonderful library and artisans. Professional artists have taken over most manuscript productions, so I was shocked to find an active, an active scriptorum here. Not much left these days. 
the artists that remain here are quite talented. Well, Kirsau is more than a bit old-fashioned. Some of my friends think I'm mad for commissioning a manuscript from Mavi in this day and age. But, well, my family have been patrons of Kirsau for generations. It seems wrong to stop now while there's still talent here. I commissioned the manuscript for Father Gernot a year ago. I thought I would stop by and check on the progress. Wait, are you the artist working on it? It's a prayer book with 20 illustrations. I know the work, but no, I do know the artist well, the venerable brother Piero. How venerable? He still has his wits and his skills, if that's what concerns you. Brother Piero has an incredible talent with color. Then I very much look forward to seeing it. Miklaus, tend to the horses and the baggage. I am heading up to the abbey. Yes, my lord. Well, let's not keep the abbot waiting any longer. Nuns. Quite unusual for a Benedictine house to have monks and nuns, even if they are separated. Found in the 6th century, the Benedictines are a Christian monastic order that observes vows of obedience, poverty, chastity, and stability under the rule of St. Benedict of Nursia. The church closed most of them centuries ago. But then, Kirsa is a place out of time in more ways than one. Uh, why were they closed? Monks and nuns leaving side by side cannot behave themselves. I don't blame them, though. The church shouldn't either. It's just human nature, after all. I must be Father Gennar. I'm Lorenz, Baron of... Yes, the Baron of Rothfogel. So wonderful to have you here again. We actually did meet on your last visit. Ah, if you say so, I'm not good with remembering faces. Please forgive me, my lord, but I wasn't expecting you for another few days. Yes, I know, but I rode ahead. I just couldn't wait to see my manuscript. I'm sure it's no trouble. Uh, yeah, yes, I, I mean no. It's no trouble. Do you want to see it now? Oh, in a moment. I could do with a bit of refreshment, though. May I grab something from the kitchen? Yes, yes, certainly, my lord. I will meet you there. Andreas, I don't know what you were doing with the Baron, but I'll lead you in the script arm now. Why are you taking this out of me? <laughs> it's not my problem. <laughs> Book of Hours, a type of illuminated manuscript that contains an abbreviated form of the prayers of the Divine Office, in addition to other religious texts. Most are relatively plain, but wealthy patrons often commission lavish examples with elaborate illustrations. Is this a bad time to ask for an advance? <laughs> hmm. Should ask again with a better mood. Maybe I could just convince Brother Matthew to pay me early. I didn't check who Brother Matthew was. No, I want to explore. A reliquary contain, containing the hand of St. Moritz, which is said to have once held the Holy Lance. St. Moritz is the patron saint of Tassing. Legend, stares, uh, legend states that he is the Egyptian born commander of a Roman legion who converted to Christianity. They were all martyred for their faith. His hand is a relic in Kursar Shrine. Holy Lance, also called the Spear of Destiny or the Lance of Longinus, it is the lance that pierced Jesus' side on the cross. Many legends around the lance and several places claim to possess it. God bless you, Master Maller. How goes your work in the scriptorum? Uh, very well, thank you. Well, then I guess you wouldn't be interested in the Saffron Agnes. Stern. Stern. I can't read that name. Received yesterday. 
What? Saffron? Really? Where'd you hear that? Sister Matilda saw her at the Albans. You can convince Prior Ferrick to get you some for your arrows. Hmm, good to know. Cross Mousefanger. She's around here somewhere. Hopefully getting to the baby rabbits before Sister Matilda does. Till later, Sister Gertrude. Bless you, Andreas. Maybe I'll see you by the shrine of Saint Satya one of these days. God bless you, Master Myler. God bless you, Brother Piero. No, wait, it's Master Myler. I thought you couldn't see Sister Margreta. During the day, I can see some colors. How'd you know it was me? You and Brother Piero both smell of the pigments and you use. But you're taller and you have another smell to you, like filth or burned almonds. Oh, that's old linseed oil. I'll ask Sister Gertrude about it. How are Sister Gertrude's herbs coming? It's too early to tell. Most of them won't be grown until May. Still working with herbs suits me. Have a good day, Sister Margareta. God bless you, Master Muller. Anything else here? Not yet. Nope. Wrong button. God bless you, Andreas. Has your voice has recovered from Easter Mass, Rudiger? Well, yes, it was a bit of a strain, but worthy sacrifice. Well, if the Lord could give us his all on Easter. Exactly. Have a good day in the scriptorum. Have a good day, sing. God bless you, Andreas. How was the secrecy today, Matthew? The same as yesterday. Does my vocation seem silly to you, Master Mahler? No, I was just being friendly. Then go in peace, friend. Know that the Abbey's treasures are secure from another day. God be with you. I have a favor to ask you. Yes, Andreas? I was hoping you could give me pay for the latest manuscript early. This isn't part of the agreement you made with Father Gernot. You'll be paid on the completion of each additional manuscript you eliminate, not before. I only have a few pages left. And I think you can wait a few days to collect your wages. This abbey runs through mutual agreements, not haphazard payments. Breaking such contracts would cause undue trouble not only for Curacao, but for Tassing as well. The matter is pressing, Brother Matthew. For the love of another Christian, I beg you to make an exception. Very well. Do not ask this of me again, Andreas Mahler. There you are. I shall note this with Father Gernot and Prior Ferenc. Thank you, Brother Matthew. God bless you, Andreas. See, our big brain logic has already <laughs> given fruit. Right, now that I've got my payment, I can give Clara the rent early. I'll give it to her directory to make sure she receives it. Okay, let's go through the dormitory. Not into the old belly, I want to go to the cloister. God give you health, Master Mahler. For the Sabbat, I'm surprised to see you still here. As am I, but I will be leaving soon, returning to Rome. And my bishop 
I and my bishop regret that we could not reciprocate Father Rudolph's generosity earlier. He showed much kindness to our priests at the Council of Constance many, many years ago. The Council of Constance was a meeting of bishops that took place between 1414 and 1418 in the Diocese of Constance to end the Papal Schism. It was also notable for the condemnation and capture of the Bohemian theologian Jan Hus. Oh, I remember Jan Hus. He was the guy from from Kingdom Come Deliverance. It's a, like a proto-Martin Luther. We remain in Rome. This is up to my bishop, but I will miss these mountains in any case. You should travel to Ethiopia, Master Muller, and see the highlands. God has blessed my home with a wondrous beauty. I would love to someday. I still need to return to Nuremberg and open my workshop. Yes, someday. Until then, if you're ever in Rome, I may still be around. I've only made it as far south as Florence, but I like to see Rome. Florence, home to the powerful Medici family who ruled the city for centuries. Florence is known for its artistic patronage, hosting artists and thinkers including Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, Botticelli, and Machiavelli. By the way, if you have some time in the next few days, it would be nice to share a meal with you and some of the townsfolk. The townsfolk? I'm accustomed to strange looks, especially in rural places like these, but I've had kind words with the baker and his wife. Ah oh, yes, the Albans, Ulrich and Gret. I offered to tell a story of the children and their mothers over meal someday. Gret seemed excited about the idea, but I would be more comfortable if you were there as well. I can certainly make time. Thank you, Andreas. I look forward to it. God give you health. Uh, so that's cool. But right now we got to go to the scriptorum. Where is the scriptorum again? <laughs> Over there. But that will have to. Ooh, let's explore the aquarium. Empty. Still pretty cool. But going into the scriptorium and actually doing any work is gonna have to be left. Chapter house? Where's where the fuck is the scriptorium again? <laughs> uh, a dance of death, mutual rule, Father Mathias had it painted a few years before his death. It's beautiful. Artistic allegory of the constancy of death, illustrations after often feature people from every station of society. To communicate that death is inevitable, claims everyone from the peasant to the emperor. That's the death, yada yada. Yeah, already seated. Large garden. Where is the door to the scriptorum again? Let's go to the refectory. It's pretty paintings. And the birds eat their meals, this is where the lector reads to them. Cloister, no. Kitchen cellar. But the, the exp I'm, I'm getting carried away. The exploring will have to be continued next episode. Thank you all very much for watching. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. All of those things that make the algorithm happy. I will see you all next time.